welcome to Things That Go Perump in the Night. I am your host, Tim Doyle, lead investigator of UFO Seekers, UFO and Alien Investigators. And I am broadcasting from Perump, Nevada. Things That Go Perump in the Night was a famous tagline from legendary Art Bell. And so we are continuing to make things go perump in the night. But today, tonight, we're talking about the Aerial Phenomenon Group at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And maybe more specifically, how the modern UFO topic has become non-serious. And I know that's kind of strange because science has gotten better. But when it comes to the UFO topic, like out in the news media, or to physicists and scientists who are very public on television, influential to children and Americans, the UFO topic has become very non-serious. It's kind of like a wink-wink thing. And unfortunately, I think it degrades the serious UFO community who never get mentioned anyways. Because a lot of people don't know that. I mean, like, out there in the public, they don't know there's, you know, a bunch of people who are into, like, unidentified flying objects, flying saucers... The alien abduction topic, are aliens visiting Earth? Do aliens exist out in the universe as attached to these unidentified objects that people say they see here on Earth? Are aliens visiting, taking people, doing science experiments? Is Earth a science experiment for aliens? You know, interesting questions, but at the same time, it used to be very serious for national security and people wanted answers. You know, and if you go like on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, the internet, Netflix, these places, it's very childlike, the approach to the topic of unidentified flying objects. It's almost like religious. And so there's a theology and you can only talk about things within the theology. But for us in the UFO community, like the real UFO community, not like Hollywood or what people see on television, you know, those of us who meet underground, who talk to each other through the internet, or meet each other in person, or have even had experiences. You know, there's people who have had alien abduction experiences and they talk to each other about it. So there's groups of people. But for the most part, a lot of them are accepting if you don't believe it. And they fully understand that because you're not handing someone like a piece of scientific evidence. And we have to remember that always when we're talking about these subjects. If we're not handing somebody a physical piece of proof, everything is a claim. I'm telling you, it used to be, you know, when someone was speaking about, wow, I had an alien abduction experience or I saw something, they were fully okay if someone didn't agree or was a skeptic, and that's okay. So that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about, like, how serious it used to be and how non-serious it is. So we're going to read about the Aerial Phenomenon Group at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And we're going to do this from a scientific perspective, from two writers, Donald Menzel and Loyal Boyd. And of course, this was written in the 1960s. So we're going back 60 years. And I've got some portions picked out of, of an old book here. Because we can't understand the present and the future if we don't understand the past. And everywhere you go, when you meet people who 
let's just use like a news journalist as an example. You meet a news journalist and the news journalist tell you, tells you they've read every book about UFOs. I don't think they really have. I really don't. Because I've almost got into arguments with some before. Over incidents of flying objects and explanations because we're trying to be like serious in a conversation and some people go to the faith and opinion and they don't understand that in daily life and in science you're supposed to have proof and evidence not speculation and opinion so that's what we're going to understand a little bit for instance right now if we go out out on the internet and we read from a mainstream news journalist, someone who calls themselves an investigative journalist. They're going to tell you the UFO topic was never taken serious until like five years ago. Now, I don't know how they reached this conclusion. I don't know if they read much. They may write a lot, but I don't know if they like read much. I think they just kind of watch videos or scour Twitter and there's not much research done so if you go out on the internet right now and you try to read about the UFO topic they're gonna to tell you it was never serious before no one ever took it serious the government never took it serious the gov government never really investigated it civilians never involved in it civilians never mentioned about it and so we're going back a little bit in history we're reading from the 1960s right now what was really going on with the UFO topic back then? How serious was it? Was there ever an aerial phenomenon group in the military? Or were there aerial phenomenon groups out there? Were there UFO groups? Well, let's find out. And we're going to take a little read here. We're going to read some snippets I picked out from... It's called The World of Flying Saucers. And this isn't a paid promotion. These are things I literally have on my bookshelf because I read and do research so that you don't have to and you can just sit back and relax enjoy your life grab some coffee or something and put your feet up so let's read some snippets from the world of flying saucers how serious was it quote few government employees in recent times have been subjected to more criticism than the men in the aerial phenomenon group at Wright Patterson Air Force Base Dayton, Ohio. This agency, usually referred to as ATIC, has the responsibility of investigating all official reports of unidentified objects in our skies. Of the thousands of such incidents studied so far, none suggest that the UFO in question came from outer space. In fact, the term UFO has proven to be one of the worst misnomers of history. In most perplexing cases, the phenomena reported are seldom material objects, very few of them are flying, and when fully analyzed, almost none remain unidentified. Identifying strange objects in the air over the United States is vital to the country's security. That military officers should be guilty of carelessness, carelessness or casual guesswork in this serious business is unthinkable. Yet ATIC investigators and through them the United States Air Force, of which are members, for more than a decade have been the target of vicious attacks by civilian enthusiasts devoted to the cult of flying saucers. Banded together in various research organizations and operating on the premise that UFOs are interplanetary in origin, most of these enthusiasts flatly reject the normal explanations. Planets, meteors, satellites, balloons, reflections, birds, radar phantoms, hoaxes, or delusions. Flying saucers obviously cruise in our skies, the believers argue, and the Air Force failure to admit the obvious proves that its investigators are incompetent or dishonest or both, and that they are involved in a giant conspiracy to conceal the truth from the American public. In the view of the saucer groups, the Air Force can do no right. Unquote. So that's just a little snippet. And right now, we're going to take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to continue learning about the serious UFO. Do 
UFO celebrity promise you alien disclosure? Did a UFO celebrity tell you lights that were just flares were actually an alien spaceship? Call now. You need to rub, 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 brand because we'll play it on Sunday, 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 or any day because we play them any day. But anyways, if you call now, 661-UFO-7889, we'll play your voicemail or read your text message. Are you pissed? Did they tell you aliens are here? Show you a video? But hey, come to find out it's just CGI. Did they show you a mummy? But hey, they attached some parts to it and told you it's an alien. Are you pissed? Call now. Send a text message. Leave a voicemail. 661-UFO-7889. 661-836-7889. That's the same number, but I'm ranting about it because they told me to tell you UFO, but they could just say the number and make it easier. But I'm ranting. You can do the same thing. Call now. Leave a voicemail. Send a text message. We'll play it on Sunday or any day because we play it every day, but I have to say Sunday because it's here on the transcript that I'm reading. So call now. 661-836-7889. 661-UFO-789. I'm out of here. Ah! investigator of UFO seekers, UFO and alien investigators. And we've been learning about the serious UFO community of the past. And we're reading right now about scientists who were looking at this back in the 60s. So everything I'm reading to you right now is literally from the early 60s. Okay. And you're going to realize that kind of history is repeating itself and the news journalists out there telling you that, wow, for the first time, people are taking this UFO topic serious, you're going to learn that they're actually the ones not taking it serious, that these things have been looked at for a long time. And like a coordinated effort from Hollywood to tell us that drones are alien spaceships is outlandish. And so like right now, what we're learning about is the historical UFO community and the scientists who were analyzing it And we're learning about the aerial phenomenon group that was at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and also the UFO topic of the time. Because they're kind of giving us like an overall generalized political perspective of what was happening. And we're we're going to learn right now about a government group, which which we've heard of, heard about already. And then we're also going to hear about NICAP, a civilian organization. We're also going to hear about civilian saucer groups that existed at the time because we can't deny history. If we want to be the serious UFO community, we have to recognize, acknowledge the past history of our topic. And so here we go. I'm continuing on where the aerial phenomenon group was getting ridiculed. So here we go. Quote, If, after receiving a UFO report, the investigators require some time to collect all the relevant facts and to reach a sound conclusion, they are berated for the delay and accused of cover-up tactics, as in the Killian case. On the other hand, when the answer is found quickly and released to the newspapers, UFO addicts deny its truth and assert that the explanation was hurriedly rushed into print in order to deceive the public, as in the Pacific sighting on July 11, 1959. Some of these popular beliefs may rest on an imperfect understanding of the actual aims, methods, and resources of Air Force investigators. The report of an unidentified flying object in about 90% of the cases comes first from an ordinary private citizen who often notifies the local newspaper or radio station Not until he reports the incident to a military official, however, is ATIC empowered to start investigation. The commanding officer at the Air Force Base nearest the place of the sighting then makes a preliminary investigation and, if the facts seem to warrant further study, forwards the information to Dayton for evaluation. With years of experience to draw on, the aerial phenomena group can often identify the unknown after a brief study of the report. If not, They try to determine whether the report contains all the facts necessary for an explanation and whether the unknown may be of interest to intelligence officers. Does it represent a possible danger to the nation? Does it have possible military significance? Does it have possible scientific or technical significance? If, after this review, the investigators conclude that the unknown might be of some importance, they carry out an intensive study in which they may have the help of an organization directly connected with the Assistant Chief of Staff for Intelligence or of Allied Intelligence Agencies. 
When all the relevant facts are collected, a survey usually shows that the unknown fits a particular class of sighting. To complete the identification, ATIC can call on the expert knowledge of a specialist in the type of phenomenon involved. Expert help is available from a large variety of sources. Official consultant to the Air Force, Dr. J. Allen Hynek. Members of the Air Force with special scientific and technical training whose full duty is the study investigation and analysis of UFO reports. A panel of military and civilian experts in all branches of science and technology. The scientific and technical laboratories of all branches of the Air Force and of other government agencies. The meteorological records of the United States Weather Bureau, the United States Coast Guard, and other government agencies commercial laboratories under contract to carry out special work. With the best scientific resource, resources of the nation available, the Air Force can make sure that a puzzling UFO phenomenon will undergo study by an expert. Reports involving radar sightings are analyzed by the research scientists who know more, most about the behavior of radar. If satellites or astronomical objects might be involved, Astronomers study the evidence. If the report includes photographs or physical evidence, experts provide the appropriate laboratory analysis. If a UFO still proves difficult to explain, the complete facts are laid before a panel of experts for discussion. When a sighting has been completely analyzed, the conclusions, known or unknown, are filed with the record of case. If the newspapers have publicized the incident, a summary of the analysis is given to the Office of Information Services Office of the Secretary of Air Force for release to the press. In the early years of Flying Saucer Saga, almost none of the men assigned to investigate UFOs had any special training in the optical and astronomical sciences or in investigative techniques. Since the specific, specific facts of so many cases were classified, civilian scientists who might have helped explain the UFO puzzles were not able to get the necessary information. Unsurprisingly, the percentage of unexplained cases sometimes reached as high as 5 to 10 percent, and once reached the staggering peak of 20 percent. In recent years, the techniques of collection, investigation, and analysis of the facts have greatly improved. Air Force investigators not only have excellent training, they also have a solid body of experience behind them. In later reviews, they have found the answers to many, but not all, of the backlog of quote-unquote unknown cases, which if reported today would probably cause no problem. Some of the old cases will probably never be solved because the men in charge at the time did not always know what questions to ask. Essential, essential information was not obtained and can never be obtained now. The Air Force never closes an unsolved case. Reports that have been listed as unidentified or insufficient evidence are reanalyzed when new evidence becomes available. Occasionally, new evidence produces a more complete or even a different explanation for a case that was previously considered probably solved. Statistical summaries of the UFO sightings for each month and for each period of six months are forwarded to SAFIS for release. In recent years, ATIC has been receiving fewer than 600 reports for year, per year and solving roughly 98%. In 1961, 578 UFOs were reported, of those in which all the necessary information was available, all but 13, about 2%, were completely explained. Believers in flying saucers tend to ignore the 98% of cases fully explained by the Air Force and to focus attention on the 2% that remain puzzling. Yet no distinguishable difference exists between the types of observation described in solved and in unsolved cases. From considering the original reports, the competence of the witnesses and the appearance and movements of the various UFOs, no analysis could predict in advance which will be fully accounted for and which will not. The witnesses in the cases that are solved are just as reliable and no less so than the witnesses in the unexplained cases. They report the same classes of phenomenon glowing UFOs, hovering UFOs, UFOs moving at high velocities, making incredible maneuvers, and behaving as though under intelligent control. 
the Air Force has accounted for nearly all of these flying saucers. The various causes included aircraft, balloons, satellites, mirages, inversions, hoaxes, delusions, reflections, birds, lenticular clouds, ball lightning, radar anomalies, sun dogs, meteors, planets, stars, the aurora, and other astronomical phenomenon. The few remaining cases report similar observations and undoubtedly have one of these causes which cannot be proved because some essential fact is missing. No data in these unsolved cases suggests that the UFOs had an interplanetary origin or that they constituted a threat to the security of the United States. When Air Force investigators have determined a UFO report does not represent anything of interest to intelligence, their duty ends. They have no obligation to pursue the problem further. Their only interest is security. So, and when we come back from commercial break, unquote, we're going to continue talking about this. Be right back. TV, United States government says they found uh, alien spaceships making war with military. The American television. And they say too, it's uh, alien spaceships. Oh yes, I have heard this myself. But you know, I don't know what we are to believe. Have you heard conversations like this? For answers to difficult questions like these, turn to UFO Seekers at ufoseekers.com. Welcome back to Things That Go Perum in the Night. I am your host, Tim Doyle, lead investigator of UFO Seekers, UFO and Alien Investigators. And we've been talking about how serious the UFO topic used to be. And so we've been reading from some scientists who wrote a book in the 1960s discussing almost like the generalized political nature and just the common nature of the existent UFO community of the time, from the government to the Air Force to civilian groups to UFO investigation groups, all kinds of groups, civilian saucer groups. We're even about to hear uh, right now. Let me just read a couple sentences from this. This is the civilian saucer groups. It says, since the first flying saucers were reported in 1947, dozens of civilian clubs have been organized throughout the world to collect reports and publish the truth, allegedly suppressed by government sources. During the last decade, the roster in the United States has included such groups as the Borderline Sciences Research Associates, Interplanetary Intelligence of Unidentified Flying Objects, Intercontinental Aerial Research Foundation, UFO Research Committee, Civilian Saucer Intelligence, Saucer Investigative Research Organization, World Society of the Flying Saucer, etc., etc. So you can see there was tons of flying saucer groups back then also in the civilian realm. And then here, let's touch on NICAP real quick. Of course, NICAP is famous from my favorite show, The X-Files. We meet Max from NICAP, and Max isn't... Uh, Max doesn't have a opinionized thought process towards the UFO topic. When we meet Max, he has a trailer with tons of equipment that he's using to actually do some in-depth research. And I think, just like me now, if I met somebody while out, let's say I'm out investigating the UFO topic... I come back home and want to show somebody evidence. It would be like a scanner. Hey, I was listening on the scanner. I heard something crashed. Let's go investigate. And they'd be like, why are you listening to a military scanner? Where's the alien, bro? Okay, but when we watch X-Files, Mulder takes, or Mulder goes into Max's trailer, and Max proceeds to play a scanner because Max is a technical nerd and has tons of great equipment to do more 
than just find, quote unquote, like the little green men. Okay, and that's what people would say to Mulder, like to ridicule him. But seriously, like Max from NICAP was totally serious, was taken serious, and was portrayed seriously by the X-Files, which was awesome. And let's read a little bit about NICAP right now. It says, the largest and probably the most influential saucer group is the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon, with affiliated subcommittees in various parts of the country, many members of local organizations, such as the UFO Research Committee of Akron, Ohio, also belong to NICAP and help maintain close liaison. The bi-monthly news sheet from them is distributed to members of NICAP and to prominent persons in the government and other fields. It regularly lists recent UFO sightings reported by members and occasionally prints a detailed report of a specific case. Few of the sightings reported can be independently, independently evaluated because the accounts often omit such essential facts as exact times, dates, places, direction of motion, etc. With headquarters in Washington, D.C., NICAP strongly reflects the views of its director, Major Donald Kehoe, U.S. Marine Corps retired, that UFOs may be interplanetary in origin, sometimes land on Earth, but rarely, if, ever make contact with human beings. Like most saucer believers, many members of NICAP tend to assume without adequate investigation that many unusual sky phenomena reported in the newspaper may be extraterrestrial objects, and they maintain this attitude in the face of overwhelming evidence. NICAP membership is theoretically open to any non-communist citizen, but applicants from the contactee fringe are not encouraged. The committee once can canceled the membership of a space evangel evangelist, evangelist sorry, when he claimed publicly to be a spokesman for NICAP, and in 1958, it canceled the membership of seven famous contactees who had been admitted without the knowledge of the director. Investigations are carried out as spare time projects of the members themselves, some of whom constitute an advisory panel of experts. Although many are highly respected in their own professions, television, journalism, military science, religion, government, aviation, engineering, medicine, psychology, and teaching in the physical sciences, few are recognized specialists in the fields required for the analysis of most UFO cases. Radar propagation, the physics of optics, meteorology, and astronomy. Since 1957, a major goal of NICAP has been a congressional inquiry that supposedly would reveal an Air Force conspiracy to deny the reality of flying saucers. In 1957, the director lodged a formal complaint with a member of the United States Senate charging that the Air Force continually made false statements on UFOs to the press, the public, and members of Congress. In support of this accusation, Major Keogh submitted summaries of more than 200 incidents. The list cited a number of UFO reports that had never been submitted to the Air Force for analysis. These included reports from foreign countries and from NICAP's private files. Unquote. So, as you can see, we've been through this process of congressional inquiries, the public talking to the government, even the Senate. So when we go out and we read in the mainstream news that all of these things are new, the government's talking about it. We can't be fooled, friends. We can't be fooled. And just the UFO topic, all of its history just denied and swept away. And all of the work of all of these people and what I've just read to you is gone and obliterated and other people try to take credit for the past so and that's what as a ufo organization we're sharing with you real ufo history so you can protect yourself from the news media and hopefully for you find what you're looking for whatever that may be and i don't care either way and i don't judge people either way it's none of my business what you believe. It's none of your business what I believe, right? And that's the way it should be. It's the way it's always been until now. Only now in modern times are like you not allowed to have an opinion. And you get shut down for it or banned or censored or blacklisted, right? 
And so what do you think? I do know this. And here's a little retrospective. Because I can Monday, m Monday morning quarterback on this a little bit. I think Kehoe was right. I think the Air Force wasn't being honest about a lot of things. But you know why? It's because already in the 60s, they had the stealth. Right? It was just a paint. Radar absorbing paint. They're already flying stealth aircraft. They're already flying space planes. Who knows? Maybe the X-15 was a stealth space plane. Maybe the SR-71 is a stealth space plane because i believe that the sr-71 went up into lower space the stories about it returning and be and it glowing orange obviously it was descending through the atmosphere so i believe there was a lot the u.s government was hiding but it wasn't the way that they thought back then and that's why it came off the way it did as a cover-up because they were the U.S. government and the U.S. military were covering things up, but they were military secrets. They were spying on everyone. They were surveilling the whole world. They were doing it from lower space. I mean, only the U-2, right, is flying like in the atmosphere. I believe they've been flying space planes since the 60s, and they've been flying in space, just taking planes straight into space, fly back home, land on a runway, just like that, into the oxygen atmosphere, then out into space and back. So I do know the U.S. military was lying about that. But I'd like to thank you for tuning in and listening to that because you're officially smarter now and smarter than news journalists who work at large corporations. So I will talk at you next time.